Hey, what's up, fellas? Checking out this hybrid burner here again today, and I'm getting a better look at the flame holder. This thing has a really nice flame holder to it. I'm glad I didn't cut the square edge off. I was going to cut it off right there where those fins are and just leave the diagonal spot, but it makes a nice little flame holder on the top there. And the reason we have that strange turbulence is because these elbows are sticking up through the top and they're messing with the wind and the air flow a little bit differently. So this is it. This is what I got going on today. This thing's doing pretty good. It would do a lot better if it was stuck inside a big large foundry furnace or something, but just sticking out the naked air like this, it ain't too bad. The reason I say that is uh, we'd be able to get a lot more power out of this thing. We're pulling a lousy one cubic foot per minute of air on the atomizer. And the reason why I don't like the oil pump atomizers is because they're very clog prone. They have a centered bronze filter on the back of the atomizer nozzle and they require a minimum of 100 PSI of pressure. Not a very easy piece of kit to keep going. This here has a four millimeter bore on the uh, ID of the fuel pin stock so it can handle contamination up to 3.75 millimeters in size without clogging this thing up. We got about 45 watts of blower power there, uh, one cubic foot per minute at 100 psi of back pressure is the atomization pressure that we're using to atomize the oil. I have a very specially built nozzle with a very small annular orifice to provide a very high velocity rip stream to rip that oil column into shreds. And doing that at a low pressure requires a very small annular orifice. So the tolerances of this nozzle are very hard to get right. I'm pretty happy with how this thing's working. I gotta test it out inside of a foundry though, because like I said, we could get 10 times as much power out of it in a good furnace because the furnace itself actually becomes the combustion chamber. This is just a pre-burner, guys. And the good thing about a pre-burner is it makes lighting the foundry easy. So this gets us out of having to use gas or anything. I'm just kind of messing around with what we got here. Now the waste oil that I'm using in this is extremely dirty. It has anything from antifreeze to transmission fluid in it. And that includes gasoline, water, Anything that comes off of a car when you work on it goes into those pits at those um, those auto repair shops. And that's where some of this oil came from. This thing's got a pretty good profile on high fire. This is what it looks like on low fire. It can do a low fire as well. I regret painting it because we can't see if it's getting red hot or not. I definitely like the flame holder effect that it gets. And I want you to bear in mind that the frame rate of this camera is deceiving your eyes right now. It looks like a stupid, lazy candle flame inside of there. But to the naked eye, at a infinite frame rate, I am not seeing that. I am seeing um, completely high velocity flame. This thing lights up extremely easy. And that's what would make it great for a very large foundry. So, Jeremy, if you guys get in any trouble, I just wanted to be alongside of you with getting one of these things running so I can answer any questions. But this is basically the configuration that you would want on a piece of kit as large as you have. Now, if we were sticking this in the end of a foundry right now, I would be able to turn the air way up. We're running like 50 to 70 watts minimum on the air. This is a 600 watt blower. So if we had a bigger furnace, I could be burning this much fuel with about 400 watts of blower power and we would be getting some serious heat. You can see there is a limit there. I just blew it out by turning the air up too high. This is not like my high velocity burners at all, guys. It may not even be able to hit the temperatures that those can. I'm a little worried about that. But I'm gonna cut a hole in a garbage can tomorrow and we're gonna make a little makeshift garbage can foundry just to test the turbulence effect and how we'll be able to turn up the blower to well over 200 watts once we have a combustion chamber to kind of capitalize on some of that extra waste heat inside the combustion chamber itself. So that's what I got going on today. This is just for my guys who don't have a large air compressor and they want to be able to do some smelting. This setup can be miniaturized. I just built it this size because I wanted to cut one of my Godzilla burners in half 
and use that as the flame holder. I thought it would make a perfect flame holder for a square combustor. You can just as easily do this with round material as well. This is just the parts that I had available. Um, you do want to have that flame holder effect in there because you get eddy currents that actually draw the, the gases in the reverse direction. And that fire traveling in the reverse direction is what maintains the stable combustion that we see on the internal of this thing when we're looking at those inside shots. So, man, now I see why those sports announcers have a, a buddy sitting next to them to cut in every once in a while. My freaking larynx is about to fall out. So I'm shutting up, guys. I'm pretty much just rambling at this point anyway. I think the test was a success. Uh, I can't wait to get a foundry big enough to stick this thing in and see how much heat we can get out of it. I might try and put a cone snout on it and hook it up to the furnace I have available at the moment. All right, I'm shutting up. I'm out of here, fellas.